Hey everyone, I'm James Lynch and this is Early Look, the show where I take a look at an upcoming notable fight and on today's edition, we're going to go to the middleweight division. We've got a really awesome matchup on the main card of UFC 286 between Marvin Vittori and Roman Delizze, but before I give you my preview and pick, you know the drill, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. The trifecta there really does help out this channel a lot, especially the like button really helps out with the algorithm and all of that good stuff. And if you've never watched the show before, basically I'm going to go through a bunch of different stats, a bunch of different intangibles about these two fighters. And then at the end, I'm going to give you my pick and some of this stuff may matter. It may not, but I like to present all the information I can get uh, as we look through both of these competitors. So as you can see there, UFC 286, three round fight, not five rounds, even though this is one of those fights I would not have an issue if they're being five rounds. It's going to be taking place at the O2 Arena in London, England. So bigger cage. And quick tale of the tape here. Marvin Vittori, 18-5-1. Roman Delizze, 12-1, 29-34. Six feet tall to six foot two, 74 inch reach to 76. So you see the only difference there really is the age. Uh, you can see there Marvin Vittori is uh, going to be, uh, I think it's five years younger than uh, Roman Delizze, but Roman Delizze a tiny bit taller here. They both actually have, actually know the reach as well. Delizze will be uh, two inches taller as a two inch reach advantage in this fight. Let's start first though with the former UFC middleweight title challenger, Marvin Vittori. So I mentioned it there. 18-5-1 uh, record. He's got two knockouts, eight submissions, and seven decisions. Uh, 28, uh, 29 years old, six feet tall with a 74-inch reach. He's the number four ranked middleweight. He's a BJJ brown belt. Used to train at King's MMA. He'd been there for a couple of years. Now at Extreme Couture. A uh, bit of an interesting move there. Uh, you saw the video the other day with him and Sean Strickland. Uh, he, he's you know switching up the training a little bit, which, which is interesting. And I kind of get it too, just with some of the bodies that are in the gym there. Um, Marvin Vittori's got performance of the night two times against Carl Roberson and Paulo Costa. He's got fight of the night one time against Jack Hermanson, who is a common opponent between these two. Uh, Marvin Vittori did not have an amateur debut. He went straight, or sorry, he did have an amateur debut. Uh, February 2011 was when he had his amateur debut, made his MMA debut on August uh, 3rd, 2013. Didn't make his UFC debut until UFC 202, where he fought Alberto Uda, ended up getting a win in that one. That was back in August of 2016. Marvin Vittori is 8-4 and four in the UFC with one draw. He's only has one stoppage victory, uh, which is interesting, right? Just the win over Roberson. But outside of that, he's gone the distance most of the time. But saying that, he's also never been finished in the UFC either. In fact, Marvin Vittori has never been finished in his career. And that's a key detail that we'll talk about a little bit later here. Uh, Marvin Vittori has got some notable wins in his career. You look at it there. He defeated uh, Jack Hermanson back in 2020, although short notice replacement on that one. Kevin Holland's notable in the sense that people know who Kevin Holland is. As far as it being like a good win, not really. Kevin Holland's in a different weight class right now, but... Again, we got to mention that too. And then Paulo Costa, obviously highly ranked middleweight. That was a good win from there. That was actually a light heavyweight fight because if you remember, during fight week, Paulo Costa's like, hey, we're not fighting at middleweight. We're going to fight at 205. And, oh yeah, and there's nothing you can do about it because we're the main event. That was kind of a crazy circumstance there. Uh, you can see the only losses that Vittori has at middleweight are against the best in the division, really. Well, I guess you could add Alex Pereira in there as well. He hasn't fought him. But for the most part, his losses, um, you know, notable losses anyways, are to Israel Adesanya twice. Uh, once when they were both middleweights and then once the other time when Adesanya was a middleweight champion. Uh, most recently lost to Whitaker. And then he had this weird loss to Antonio Carlos Jr. Uh, back in December of 2016. But I think we can all agree that Vittori is a much better fighter than he was back then. Now, Vittori's had a few layoffs. We like talking about that on here. Uh, going from Israel Adesanya, the first fight to Cesar Ferreira, there was a 450. Uh, 455 day layoff there and then going from Paulo Costa to Robert Whitaker there was a 315 day layoff so just two little layoffs there nothing crazy he has been pretty active if you look at a lot of the activity uh, since he signed with the UFC in 2016 he's fighting at least twice a year sometimes three times a year there was COVID in between there but overall has been pretty active no major injuries either for Vittori um, that's one bonus for him 29 years old uh, again, no major injuries or anything like that. Uh, he's had a couple close fights. We'll talk about the Adesanya one. Everyone always brings that fight up. That was a split decision uh, back in April of 2018. And uh, the, I remember the narrative going into the rematch was like, oh, Vittori nearly beat him. I watched that fight live and I thought Adesanya won. I went back and watched it. I still thought Adesanya won. I went back and looked at the scorecards on MMA decisions. If you guys don't know what that is, that's where all the media can uh, post their scorecards. Um, 15 media members scored the fight for Adesanya. Only two scored it for Vittori. So I think, again, even though it was a split decision win for Adesanya, most people felt like he won. So no controversy there. One fight I did want to point out is that draw he had against Amariak Madoff. It was a, a majority decision draw in that fight. Uh, went back and looked at the scorecards for that one. Uh, that was at UFC 219, December 2017. Two media members scored the fight for Vittori. 
Three scored at a draw, 10 scored at for Akhmedov. Of course, Akhmedov, I believe, is in PFL now, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, that could have been another loss in his resume there. So if you think of, you know, he could really be eight and uh, he could really be seven and five if it wasn't for that draw, right? If you think about it. So sorry, it would be eight and eight and five because he would still have the win there. My bad. Math was never my thing, guys. Give me a break. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of another interesting fight, kind of looking back on his career. Um, but but again, Vittoria has really raised his game over the last couple of years, and that's why you see him getting these fights with Whitaker and Adesanya, etc. He's looked quite well and only just two losses in his entire career. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about Marvin Vittori. Again, a very uh, exciting fighter, uh, quite the personality, and one of the few Italian fighters in the UFC as well. But let's talk about his opponent here, Roman Delizze. This guy's a killer, man. Look at that. Look at that photo, man. That's that's some scary stuff there. So Roman Delizze, 12 and 1 record, uh, seven knockouts, three submissions, and two decisions. He's the number eight ranked uh middleweight. Actually, let me double check that. I think that might be wrong. I believe it's middleweight. Uh, what do we got here? Middleweight, middleweight. Uh, yeah, he is. Okay, I was right there. Never mind. Jumped the gun. It's just good to double check, anyways. Uh, like I mentioned there, the lead's a 34 years old. He's six foot two with a 76 inch reach, so he'll be a little bit bigger here, but he's also uh, five years older than Marvin Vittori as well. So a bit of a difference there. Uh, now Delize, as you can see there from Georgia, uh, does live there. Actually, it says he's fighting out of the Ukraine. I don't think he's over there right now. Uh, just with everything that's going on. Um, I did watch his YouTube channel before I hopped on here. It, I do believe he was back home in Georgia. Um, I know he obviously spent some time there in between camp, but then in the video blog, he mentions that he's traveling to the States. I'm assuming he's still training at Extreme Couture. So that's interesting. Vittori changing his gyms to Extreme Couture. Uh, Delize there as well. It's a big gym. Obviously, you can separate guys. This is not the first time two fighters from that gym have fought each other. Um, but I'm just curious how that will impact his training. Maybe he can't use all the training partners he was used to. So uh, that'll be interesting. I uh, don't really have a lot of insight into Leeds. Unfortunately, uh, with, with uh, who their manager is, uh, you know, their manager, unfortunately, limits the media for both of these guys. So that would be some good information to know uh, with both of these guys, how exactly they're training with the fact that both of them, uh, for the most part, are training, uh, do train in Vegas as well. Um, and then Delize has only got performance of the night one time, and that was against Kyle Dawkins, uh, which was a pretty impressive win. He smashed Kyle Dawkins, remember that, last June. Uh, so Delize, uh, as you can see there, did not have an amateur career. Uh, went straight to the pros in December of 2016. And just to give you a little bit of context here, uh, I know Delize has some other disciplines that he's trained in, but the fact that he got into MMA so late, December 2016, Marvin Vittori had 13 fights at that point, including two fights in the UFC. So that's just, if you want to see a bit of an experience gap here, uh, that's one right there. Again, Vittori having 13 fights, Delize making his debut uh, way back in December of 2016. By the time um, Delize made his UFC debut, which was July of 2020, uh, Vittori had eight UFC fights. So, you know, again, the experience edge certainly going to Marvin Vittori. Uh, Roman Delize has a 7-1 UFC record. He's got three stoppage wins. The only notable win he has is Jack Hermanson, which was in his last fight. Outside of I wouldn't really count Phil Haas as a notable win. Haas may have been ranked at some point. I don't think he was, but these are all unranked opponents. In fact, some of these guys aren't even in the UFC anymore. I think Staropoli got cut. Uh, Trevin Giles is in a different weight class now. He's a uh, welterweight. John Allen, I believe, was cut. And Ima Grivov is also uh, cut, I believe, as well. So... Again, not his fault. You got to fight who you're fighting, but it is something interesting to kind of think of here as far as who who has fought who. Vittori's fought the much better competition uh, compared to the two of them, and they do have that one common opponent in Jack Hermanson. Now, because uh, Delizze just got in the UFC, uh, what, less than three years ago, he hasn't had many layoffs. He's been pretty active overall. Uh, has had some injuries, though. Did, did, did go back and look this up. Um, so he was actually supposed to make his UFC debut in 2019. I had an undisclosed injury against uh, uh, Gad Gadzi uh, and Tigulov was supposed to have that fight in April, undisclosed injury there, then had another injury against Vinicius Moriera, that was back in June of 2019, and then he was uh, supposed to fight Brennan Allen, this wasn't an injury, but this was December of 2021, he had an illness in that one, not really sure what happened, but it was not COVID because uh, he was removed for COVID uh, in the Kyle Dawkins fight in November of that year. So, or maybe it was COVID still, that it was still lingering. I don't know. Either way, nothing injury related. So kind of what I'm getting at is he's only had a couple injuries in his career, nothing too major. Now, the only close fight that Delizze's had, you see the split decision win there. Uh, I thought he clearly won. I don't know how someone scored that fight for John Allen, but the Trevin Giles fight, went back and looked at the scorecards for that one. That was UFC on ESPN 21 back in March of 2021. Uh, nine media members scoring the fight for Giles, eight media members scoring the fight for Delizze. So again, Giles just barely edging that one out. If not, we could be talking about an undefeated fighter in the UFC at this point. 
Okay, so that is my, again, there's not a lot on Delizze to really talk about because he hasn't had that many UFC fights. So what does this come down to? Well, here's the thing with Delizze. He's good everywhere, right? We saw in the last fight with Hermanson, he's got a ground game. He can submit you. Um, very impressive, especially with considering how good of a ground game Jack Hermanson has. So that was a good win. And the dude has some serious power. Knocked out Phil Haas. I mean, fair enough. Phil Haas has been knocked out a few times, but still, that was a devastating finish. The the knee clinch uh, knockout he had over Kyle Dawkins was pretty devastating as well. Uh, Kyle, I, uh, Kyle also, I believe, was a release from the UFC recently but uh yeah this guy's got power and he's good on the ground that is a dangerous combination but here's the problem he's 34 years old he's getting up there in age a little bit right like this isn't heavyweight where you could say oh you'll fight to your 40 you don't see a lot of really old middleweights in that weight class right so um it's not like he's a spring chicken so again very well rounded uh very dangerous but he's fighting the guy in Marvin Vittori who's never been finished and he's fought guys that have finishing power, like Adesanya. Like, and despite what people say, Adesanya calling him boring, Adesanya did have some stoppage wins prior to, uh, you know, um, he's had some stoppage wins in his career before. Um, Whitaker's also a guy that, that can, you know, has some knockout power as well. Wasn't able to get anything done there. Um, that's going to be the big problem here. If Delizze can't finish this fight and it goes to the scorecards, what's going to happen? He's had two fights already. One did not go his way. The other one was a split decision, which again, I thought he clearly won, but... That's what's kind of interesting. And keep in mind, this is only a three-round fight. So what it comes down to for me, and, and again, uh, we don't have odds on this fight yet. If I had to guess, Vittori is going to be the favorite here. I would think two to one, maybe, just because of who he's fought. Like, you look at this killer's row, right? Whitaker, Costa, Adesanya. Like, outside of fighting Alex Pereira, he's pretty much fought all the top guys, right? And let's also remember, too, that Delizze is getting this fight in, in two parts. Number one... He's getting this fight because he beat Jack Hermanson. Okay, that was a huge win. Not going to take anything away from that. But that was also a fight that he took on short notice. Who's Hermanson supposed to fight? I'm trying to remember. It was someone else, and Delizze stepped in. And he really had nothing to lose in that fight. It was Derek Brunson, that's right. So Brunson was supposed to fight Hermanson. Delizze steps in. And Delizze, in my opinion, lost that first round against Hermanson. It was only when he was able to come back and get the stoppage win that he earned the victory. And that's his biggest win. So kind of what I'm getting at here is that I think Delizze is dangerous. I think may, I think there is a possibility he could be the real deal. And maybe this is his breakthrough fight. And I was wrong all along. That, that absolutely could happen here. I get it, right? He's, again, very dangerous fighter. But from what we've seen already, Marvin Vittori, like I said, fought better opposition, tough to take out, really active guy, and... You know, I just think that Vittori is, you know, is equally as dangerous in, in all areas. Doesn't have the power that um, that Delizze has, and maybe not the ground game either. But he's still very well rounded. He's very like again, he's not making it. He's, he's not. He's not getting close to being finished against a you know Whitaker or Adesanya. Is kind of what I'm getting at. Um, he'll be taking some good shots in this fight, no doubt. But with that said, I think Vittori wins the decision here. I really do. I Vittori's not much of a finisher. Again, just one stoppage win in his career, and it was against Carl Roberson, a guy who's been submitted a handful of times, so I can't really put much stock in Vittori being a finisher here. Um, with the leads, eh, that's all he does is finish, but he's fighting a guy who's like, like I could even see if Vittori was getting up there in age, maybe like 35, and yeah, he hadn't been finished, but eventually, you know, the finish was going to come. I don't think it's this fight. I think Vittori survives that. The only thing I will say is that Vittori's got all the pressure in the world here, okay? This was a guy that was not very competitive against Robert Whitaker, in my opinion. I thought Whitaker completely dominated that fight, and I think that speaks more to how good Whitaker is, but the point I'm getting at is that Vittori, in my opinion, has kind of shown that he needs to work to, to get back to being a contender, because I think right now he's not. I think he's a top five guy, but I don't think he's enough to be a contender here. But with the leads, I have no idea. Again, the circumstances to him getting this fight are very interesting. He's not, he's ranked number eight. He beat Hermanson, but realistically, this the only reason this fight is happening, I think, is because of their manager, because they he both he reps them both. It was easy to put together. And I think both guys want to keep active. But realistically, Vittori, even despite losing to Whitaker, should probably be getting a higher ranked opponent. He probably should have fought like a Derek Brunson or someone like that. I realize Brunson fighting Drake is duplicy, but you kind of get where I'm saying. Like this is kind of a unusual matchmaking that we don't see too often where you get a guy who's ranked so low fighting a guy who's a bit higher. So Delizze has that on his side in terms of him, you know, being a really not having much to lose here. I mean, I guess he has some to lose because he is a bit older, but again, it's it's one of those interesting things. So again, I'm going Vittori decision just because he doesn't finish a lot of his fights. Um, I think he can take some shots from Delizze. Um, I, I think if you were to hedge this fight, if you wanted to do it, you go Delizze inside the distance and you go Vittori decision because I just don't think Vittori is going to finish him as good as he's been. Uh, we'll see if the camp switch up makes a difference here. But yeah, I think the safe bet here is Marvin Vittori by decision. I think I think that's, and I know a lot of times I pick decision on here, but I have a reason for it in this case, where you have a guy in Vittori, doesn't finish a lot of his opponents. You've got a guy in Delizze who's been finishing not as good competition. So I just don't see. think we'll see a finish there.
So I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Always happy to talk about these fights as long as you guys are cool about it. You know, if you disagree with something or I made a mistake, let's have a discussion about that. No need for insults. You know, you know how we, I like doing it here on this channel. Uh, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Lynch on Sports. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel while you're there. Hit that like button, hit that notification bell. And there's any other fights you guys want me to preview. Let me know. I'm always open to suggestion when it comes to this stuff, uh, especially with the fact that, um, you know, we, we have some fun fights that maybe aren't main events. For example, like, you know, Justin Gaethje and Rafael Fiziev. I'm going to be previewing that for sure, even though that's not a main event. So just if there's any fights you guys want me to preview, just let me know in the comments. All right. I'm James Lynch. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.